Mike Brelsford here from Brelsford Woodworks. I'm in the middle of my sycamore epoxy hollow form project. Uh, you may have already seen it or will see it in the future, but I'm still working on it. But in the meantime, while I'm waiting for stuff to happen, I'm going to try something else. I've got a chunk of southern yellow pine here, which is actually a tail off of one of my roof rafters in my shop and uh, I've had them chunks lying around I decided I'm gonna try to do a hollow form out of uh, one of these um, the grain in here is pretty tight which is kind of nice and uh, I'm interested to see what I can do with it so let me get going got a radical idea to try for sanding I wouldn't do this except that there's with this pine there's so much tear out apparently I'll need surgical sharpness in order to get anything remotely approaching um, smooth with my tools so instead of fighting with that I'm gonna go aggressive with the sanding and I've got my little Porter cable, I call it my armadillo. That's what it looks like to me. And uh, being that I have some nice, long, flat areas, I think I might be able to see what I can get with that. <laughs> so, the only, the only abrasives I have right now are ones I bought at Lowe's. Now, I buy a lot of stuff at Lowe's, but I typically don't buy my abrasives there because they're garbage. I've had belts, I've been able to put on my belt sander, my big belt sander for a matter of seconds and they break. So I buy most of my abrasives from Klingspor uh, Woodworking Store. Uh, they're actually known for their abrasives and um, 
their stuff just lasts forever but I still have some of these Lowe's ones and I have to work through them <laughs> You know what, that actually makes a big difference. There is still a lot of sap in the wood, so that, that'll that slow things down and limit to what I can actually get accomplished. Um, but overall, I'm, I'm, this is not bad, not bad. I'm just wondering, maybe I should do a little Shashugi ban on this. Get my torch, give it a give it a blackening, and uh, then proceed with sanding it from there. Let me see what I can do with that. A lot of sap boiled out. Let me uh, let me see if I can rub it down, burnish it out with some uh, shavings. So I kind of like the finish that gave. This this cracks. You see it up here. Kind of like that. Or some powder post beetles had gotten in there, but they're long gone now. I actually don't know how much more I'm going to do for sanding, only because I, you know, might change that finish up. I might just give it a brush over, and if it takes too much, I can always cook it again a little bit. Let's see. So normally I would try to spare you, or at least I learned this, spare you all the sanding. But actually, if I'm doing in this particular case, I think it's integral to the actual what the project is as far as how it's coming out. And uh, so I'm going to do a little, show you a little bit more because I might end up burning again in between each of the grits. See what happens. I think I'm going to hit it again with a torch. Oh boy. That sap is something else. Look at that. So, I think next, if I do another one of these, which I probably will, because I'm actually enjoying this, um, I'm going to try to find something clear uh, without the big knot in it, because there's too much sap that comes out of that. But I need to find some of the stuff that grew, grew slowest, because I've got a lot of stuff here, and the, the growth things can go anywhere between here, and then I've had them where they're... It seems like they're a quarter inch apart. Now that, those that that's not very uh, pleasing wood to look at. I do fine when I'm building, but but for something like this, you want you want closer grain. And this this piece has nice close grain, but it's got a few defects. But this is a good learning piece. 
Um, but uh, let's see, I just did the 120. Let me go to, uh, I, okay, I'm gonna jump to one, 180 on this. So another thing I've, I've been doing is I've started to buy the scalped paper and I still have some of the non-scalped, the straight three inch round, and I'm trying to work through all that paper too and then buy scalped exclusively because it's, it's way better getting into corners and everything. So you can feel how the burning is bringing out the, the raising the, the grain on this in areas. It's pretty interesting. But uh, I don't know if I'm going to burn it again. It might, that might be good because now I'm down to the, the much higher grits. Well, maybe I'll hit it one more time and then after this because I got 220, 320, and 400 left. So what I've learned, and I don't know a ton about it, is that Shoshugi Ban is a method that the Japanese use for preserving wood. And they burn the outside of the wood and they use lit boiled linseed oil uh, on it. And I don't know all of the particulars, but I do know that they get no rot and no insects and they've got stuff that's more than a thousand years old that is still standing which is absolutely remarkable and the thing that got me thinking about that is that i'm i'm trying to do some rustic fencing on my property and i've got all this all this pine i got a lot of small pine that i've been cutting down and using for it and i was thinking gosh there's got to be how did they do it uh, in the past without pressure treated and uh, well that's one of the methods and uh, so I'm, I'm trying to employ it here so we continue on hmm. I actually like that how that looked quite a bit okay So what I've got here, I got the 320 grit. I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna burn it before that, but I think I am gonna burn it last time before the 400 grit, which is the last grit I use. So let me use it, and I'm gonna use the burn it, then the 400, and then I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna put straight wax on it. And this is the scallop paper I was talking about. It extends beyond the disc and rolls up so you can get into corners and, it, and it'll do some sanding there too.
right, so I'm back again. I want to, uh, I'm going to drill out this as deep as I can get it. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to hollow it out, but I'm going to get too crazy because I want to, I, I want to save this one. I don't want it to fall apart on me. I want, I need this as a kind of a guide for the next one I do of these, which I think I am. And uh, so let me try this out. Mm. That's not good. All right, I do believe I missed the entire hollowing of this. I thought the camera was on and I blew it. At any rate, I am now finishing it up. I'm sanding on the uh, the opening. Um, I, I went, um, I don't know, probably six to eight inches deep. Um, yeah, probably about six inches. And I didn't go any deeper because of the big knot down here. I was afraid it, it would fall apart. So I want to leave it like this. This isn't the greatest piece of wood ever, but it, it, I think this is a good demonstration for what I want to do in the future with more Shoshugi Ban. Um, and let me just finish the sanding and we'll wrap this up.